Praise the Lord. Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, God is a good God. He's a wonderful Father. He's maintained us and sustained us. He's kept us safe. I want to thank God for that. Um, welcome to everybody to this uh, little short message that I'm going to give today. I'm going to talk about the prayer of faith. Jesus talks a lot about faith in the Bible. And we know that the Christian walk is a walk of faith. It's not a walk of sight. You have to have faith to walk this Christian walk or it will not uh, be a successful Christian walk. Um, also prayer that moves mountains. You know, um, I would like to tune our attention to Mark chapter 11, verse 23, 24, 25. Mark chapter 11. Verse 23, and if you don't have your Bible, please get your Bible so you can note these things and highlight them if you can in your Bible. Mark chapter 11, verse 22 through 25. So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. For assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, Be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. 24. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Verse 25. Whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. I really like that um, scripture. It's Jesus talking and I love the words of Jesus, the Son of God. Um, and these are his words, words that he used. Uh, and I, I really like to highlight them and mark them in my Bible. So there is a way of praying by in faith. Uh, faith is something that you know we have to develop as we walk in our Christian life. We cannot always have a simple short prayer. We have to have dedicated prayers, uh, devoted prayers that we can pray in faith. Sometimes it's praising God, you know, prayer that worships the Lord or prayer that, you know, uh, just spend some time with Him because you love Him out of the deep, deep uh, bottom of your heart. Um, sometimes we pray for things that we need. Um, you know, we all have needs and necessities in our life or sometimes it's something that you need deliverance from. So those, those prayers need a prayer of faith. Um, in a previous message, I talked about fasting and praying. Sometimes that's required. And sometimes the Lord will guide you and He will lead you. He will tell you, you know what, fast and pray. And get, don't put that away, you know, make a time for fasting and praying. So today I want to talk about prayer that moves the mountains. Jesus, in this particular passage, he was talking to his disciples and he always used parables because he wanted them to see what he was talking about. Otherwise, he, they would not have understood him. So he, he talked about um, asking the mountain to move into the sea and it will move. For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, and the mountain is a big problem or a big obstacle that's in somebody's way, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart but believes that those things he says will be done that he will have whatever he says so when you ask the lord to god i need this problem to be moved in jesus name it will happen but there are some principalities first of all i'd, give, I'd like to give you some points you have to be a believer you know you have to accept jesus as your personal savior the bible says to repent and you know accept jesus into your life surrender your life to christ if we're all sinners, we all have sinned and we all have lived uh, in, in, in ways that are not acceptable to God. And if you are one of those people today watching me or listening to me, and if you are a sinner, I urge you to take a minute, get on your knees and just ask the Lord, ask Jesus to come into your heart. Ask God for forgiveness of your sins and ask the Lord to wash you with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And he will, he will take all those sins away and it will not be remembered. The Bible in Romans, it says, you know, once you are a new creation, the old things are passed away. It's forgotten. It's no more. So once you are a child of God, the old things that you've done and that you've lived, that, that lifestyle is gone. You, you're going to live as, as a Christian. You're going to live with God, with Jesus. And second, in verse 25, it talks about holding a grudge. When you, when you pray for something, asking the Lord, you have to have forgiveness in your heart. There are people that have wronged us. There are things that don't go our way. Or there are sometimes, you know, you, you, you think that, oh man, man, somebody, you know, treated me rudely or somebody was mean to you. You have to forgive them. Because Jesus forgave a lot of people, people that crucified him. Jesus forgave them. So that's a prime example in the Bible. You know, forgive people. Um, 
so for in order for you to have deliverance that's not you're not forgiving so they you know so they, you're not forgiving i don't want to say like oh you're blessing them you have to bless your enemies you have to forgive your enemies because sometimes it's not that person it's the devil making them do some some of these things to hurt you but if you forgive them According to the Bible, you're going to have deliverance. You're going to have peace of mind. God is going to give you peace. The Spirit of God will come into you and, and rest with you. And you will have peace in your heart and in your spirit. You will not be troubled. So when you pray for something with faith, you have to ask God to forgive you. Or, or you know, if you have wronged somebody, if somebody else has wronged you, ask God to forgive them. Forgive us and forgive that person. And verse 26 says, but if you do not forgive, neither will your father in heaven forgive your trespasses. So we want God to forgive us. So for him to forgive us, we have to forgive others. Don't hold grudge from previous many, many years ago. I hear people talk about things that, you know, has hurt them. And, and that was intentional. They got hurt. They were literally hurt. And they, they, are, they are in pain because of that. But it could be from years ago. You know what? Follow the Bible way of forgiving. As it sometimes it's hard you need God's help I had to go through that forgiveness process and sometimes it takes months it takes weeks but just ask the Lord to help you through it and God will help you forgive somebody that has wronged you um, or hurt you badly in Mark chapter 14 verse 36 I want to come to that verse in just a little bit but pray according to God's will whatever you're praying for and asking God for a deliverance upon Make sure that this is God's will for you. Or if you're praying for a promotion, make sure you're asking for God's will. If you're praying for your children, ask for, your, for God's will. Um, Mark chapter 14, verse 36. This is Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Right before he was about to be crucified, he is very sorrowful. He's very... Um, he's, he's really very... A lot of anxiety and a lot of sorrow in his heart. He's thinking about what is about to come. He knows that he's going to be crucified in, in, in a few days. So he's in the Garden of Gethsemane asking the Father, Above Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but, you, but what your will is. So he's asking the Father, God, if it is your will, take this crucifixion away from me. This is what my will is, God, but let your will be done. So always make sure that what you're praying for is God's will. Uh, believe and do not doubt. In Hebrews 11.1, 1, it talks about faith. It's the substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. When you pray for something, it looks like a mountain. It's very hard. It's a difficult thing. But you know what? You're going with the Bible. You're, you're walking according to the Word of God. So Hebrews 11.1, 1, faith is the substance of things, not, things, not, things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. So you do not see what's going to right in front of you. When you pray, things are not happening. You're not, getting, you're not being healed right away. You're not you know, getting the deliverance right away. But that's okay. You keep hoping and you keep believing. For example, if you think about Abraham, God told him, you know, I'm going to make your generation as the sand of the sea, which is numerous, but he doesn't even have a child. It's like, how oh God, how can that be? I don't have a child. I'm old. My wife is getting old. You know, how is this going to happen? Sarah had a bright idea. You know, she gave his, her, her handmaid, her handmaid to uh, Abraham to have a baby with, and they had Ishmael, but that was not God's will, but it happened. And you know, God's will was to give them Isaac. Sometimes we have to wait. We have to believe that, you know, I prayed. I know my God will come through. And do not doubt in your heart. Some people I hear, even Christians, I hear them say, well, you know, I've been praying for many years and I've tried this, this faith thing, but it's not working. Well, you have to, you have to give time. You have to let God work it out. Sometimes there are kinks and loops that God has to straighten out in our lives. And for in order for you to get something, sometimes God wants you to be mature in the spirit. Sometimes God wants you to grow up in your Christian life. So when you, get, when you pray for something, you might not get it right away, but don't be discouraged. You might be praying for your family life. You might be praying for your children. You might be praying for a financial breakthrough. You might be praying for a promotion that is yet to come. If you have a promise of God, child of God, let me tell you, believe and do not doubt, and it will come to pass. It will come to pass. Think, think of Abraham. He believed without doubting. That's why he got his Isaac. He, Isaac needed to come. Because, you know, what Isaac, that lineage is where Jesus ends up coming. So in, in order for Isaac to show up in your life, Abraham has to believe. Abraham had to wait. He had to wait. Don't jump into other circumstances. Don't, don't jump and give up on God. You know, wait on the Lord. Wait on Him. Know that He will come through. And by Hebrews 11, verse 6, it says, 
Without faith, it is impossible to please God. We have to have faith to please God. Have the spirit of faith, maintain it, we're all, we're all, but you will always come out victorious. 1 John 5 verse 4, the word says, For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is a victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So we have to maintain a spirit of faith when we face trials in our lives. Don't just give up. Maintain the spirit of faith. When you maintain that spirit of faith, you will come out victorious because that's what the word says. First John 5 verses 4. I'm going to read it again. For everyone that is born of God. So you have to be a believer. You have to believe in Jesus. Don't just pray because, you know, Jesus might answer your prayers. No, you have to believe in him. You have to believe in his resurrection. You have to believe in the crucifixion. You have to believe that he was the son of God that was the Messiah the Savior that came from heaven for you you have to believe in him repent of your sins this is a victory that overcomes the world this world the system of the world is very demonic in nature it's very dark that's where we're living we're living in a in a, in a place where you know what it, it's it's Satan that rules over this world but we need to have the Spirit of God to guide us and when you have the spirit of faith in you and you have the spirit of faith of Jesus Christ you will overcome the world 2nd Corinthians 4 verse 13 number 5 believe you received and speak it Paul states I believed therefore I have spoken so if you look back into Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 it talked about faith and when you keep going, when you keep reading, it talked about how the universe was created. God created the universe out of nothing. It was non-existent. He created the sun, the stars, the moon, the sky, the oceans, the things, and you know, the, the animals, the fishes in the ocean, everything, all this, all these things, even humans, we're all created by God, you know, like speaking. When he spoke the, when the word of faith, all these things started evolving. I would like to read that word, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which were seen were not made of things which are visible. So God created all these things from things which are not visible. It was non-existent, but He brought it into existence. So today the trees, the birds, the animals, everything that we see around us, the earth, the universe, everything, God created, He brought that into existence from non-existent things. So, so but He just spoke it. So we have to believe. You pray, you believe, you receive it. Thank you for the healing, Lord. And you speak it every day. Thank you, Jesus, for, 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 for healing me. Thank you, Jesus, for my promotion. I thank you, Jesus, that you are going to come through. Thank you, Jesus, my children are saved. They're going to walk in your ways. Thank you, Jesus, that uh, uh, you know I'm healed. I'm delivered. I'm delivered from demonic attacks. Thank you, Jesus, I am delivered from depression. So we need to have, you need to speak. Genesis 1-3, God created the universe by commanding them. So that's a very good example. If we can fathom that this world was dark, it was nothing. And out of that came all this beautiful universe, this beautiful oceans and, you know, beautiful things that happened in this world. It all because Jesus, uh, all because Father God just created it. A believer have to walk the Christian life by walking in faith and not by sight. The Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. You cannot achieve a successful Christian life if you're going to walk by sight. You cannot have things right then and there and then you believe it. That's not faith. Faith is believing that God will do it. I just have to wait. I have to give it some time, but my God is going to do it. He's working some things out for me right now. He's doing some things where I can get to that place where I need to be. He, right now I have this problem in my life, but I believe that God is already taking care of it. I thank you, Jesus, for the healing. I thank you, Jesus, for the promotion. I thank you, Jesus, for uh, giving me everything that I need in my life. I thank you, Jesus, for the car that I need. I thank you, God, for delivering me from depression. I thank you, God. You know, you just keep thanking God. You you pray your pr prayer of faith and you believe it and you receive it and then you speak it make sure you speak these things out whatever you need even though you don't have it you speak it that is a mustard seed faith if you look at a mustard seed it's very tiny it's very compact there's no space in it if you break it you cannot really break it. if you crush it it's very thin and condensed there's no space in there but it's very tiny but the mustard tree the tree that produces is huge. It's a very big tree that produces a tiny little seed. So God is comparing faith to this mustard seed that is teeny tiny. It's very small, yet very powerful. So, you know, receive your deliverance by the spirit of faith. Amen. Praise God. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, faith is finding out what God said in his word. 
believing in our heart and confessing it with our mouths until it comes to pass. So you know what, I, I'm, I'm imagining that Abraham spoke to God every day and he just kept saying, you know what, Isaac is coming. Isaac is coming, you just have to wait. You just have to wait, Abraham. Sometimes we have to wait because God is trying to teach us some things. Sometimes we have to wait because God wants to teach us patience. Sometimes we have to wait a little bit because we're growing in our spiritual life. But yet while we wait, child of God, let me tell you, do not give up. Do not give up. Let your faith increase. Let your faith increase. Wherever you're hurting, put your hand on that, you know, on, on that, on that place and just thank God for the healing. Pray over it and thank you, Jesus, that I'm healed. Thank you, Jesus, I'm healed. By your stripes, I am healed. Use these word of God. Use, you know, you know, don't give up. Don't say negative things. Keep having that positive attitude, not just your own positive attitude, but believe in God. You know, everything has to happen with the basis being on Jesus. With the base, your foundation of your faith has to be based, based on God. I, I thank God. Thank you, God, for uh, letting you and me have this time together. Um, I would like to say a word of prayer and then I'm going to um, close this short message. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come into the throne of grace. Lord, right now, I thank you, God, for the one that is watching me. I pray that whatever they may be going through, Father, let your angels just come in there and take over, Father. I pray that you will give them the healing that they've been waiting for. I pray that you will give them the promotion that they have been waiting for. I pray that they will their walk of faith will increase, Father God. Let them know that you walk by you you work by faith and not by sight, Father God. Lord Jesus, I pray that you will give them the healing they need. I pray that they will grow in you, Father God. Let them spend more time in the Word of God and let them grow in you, Father. We give you all the glory, God. We love you so much, God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. May God bless you.